This video will show you the process for replacing the starter motor in your Champion Inverter. Your unit may look slightly different depending on your wattage and model. Before beginning, you will need a puller tool to complete the starter replacement. Do not begin this process unless you have the necessary tools and feel confident in your abilities to disassemble and reassemble a generator. Step 1. Remove the two bolts on the top of the left side panel with a Phillips head to remove the panel. Then disconnect the battery and disconnect the spark plug cap. Then locate and loosen the fuel drain bolt at the bottom of the carburetor and completely drain the fuel from the fuel tank. Step 2. Remove the two bolts on top of the other side panel with a Phillips head. Then remove the two screws holding on the recoil handle, fit the handle through the hole in the panel, and remove the side panel. Step 3. Remove the six rubber caps around the top panel, and then remove the eight bolts holding on the top panel with a Phillips head or 8mm socket. Use an Allen wrench to remove the four bolts on the ends of the handles. Then disconnect and remove the fuel cap to fully remove the top panel, and then replace the fuel cap. Step 4. Behind the front panel, disconnect the fuel line from the back of the fuel valve using a pair of pliers. If you did not fully drain the fuel tank in step 1, you will spill fuel all over the inside of your generator, which is a dangerous hazard. Make sure you have fully drained the fuel tank before disconnecting the fuel line. Then remove the fuel vent line from the top of the gas tank. Remove the four bolts and washers holding on the gas tank with an 8mm socket, and fully remove the gas tank. Step 5. Loosen the hose clamps around the inlet pipe with a Phillips screwdriver. Then open the air cleaner and remove the two nuts inside with a 10mm socket. Disconnect the breather tube, then remove the air cleaner and inlet pipe, and keep track of the gaskets. Step 6. Mark the choke wire with a sharpie, and then loosen the two screws that are clamping the choke wire with a Phillips screwdriver, and remove the choke wire. Disconnect the gasoline fuel line from the carburetor with a pair of pliers and disconnect the other end of the fuel line from the fuel valve. Then on the back side of the carburetor, loosen the hose clamp on the propane fuel line with a Phillips screwdriver and disconnect the propane line from the carburetor. Step 7. Remove the yellow cap on the fuel knob and use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw inside the knob and remove the knob. Then use a Phillips head to remove the six screws around the power panel and pull back the panel to snip any zip ties and loosen the wires. Disconnect the three wire connectors and feed them through the hole in the back of the panel. Then use a Phillips head to remove the six bolts around the front panel and pull back the front panel. Step 8. Take note of all the wire connections because you will need to reconnect all of these wires when reassembling the unit. Snap a photo to help you remember the connections if you need to. Snip any zip ties to loosen the wires and disconnect all wire connectors that lead back to the front panel or carburetor. Make sure to pay attention to the location and orientation of all the wire connections. Use an 8mm socket to remove the bolt holding on the ground wire on the side of the engine and replace the bolt. Then loosen all wire clips to allow you to fully remove the front panel. Step 9. Slide the carburetor off the studs, along with the carburetor insulator and gaskets. Then on the front of the unit, remove the ground wire bolt and washer on the control unit. Using a 10mm socket, remove the three bolts holding on the control unit remove the control unit, and keep track of the six washers. Step 10. Remove the three bolts holding on the recoil housing with an 8mm socket, and remove the recoil housing. Then remove the four bolts holding on the starter pulley with an 8mm socket, and remove the pulley. Use an 8mm socket to remove the four bolts around the engine shroud, and take note of the location of any wire clips. Slightly pull out the engine shroud, remove the fan first, and then fully remove the engine shroud from inside the unit. Step 11. With a 7mm socket, remove the two bolts holding on the trigger, and remove the trigger. Remove the nut from the center of the stator using a 19mm socket, and set up your specific puller tool to remove the rotor, and remove the rotor. Step 12. Use an 8mm socket to remove the three bolts holding on the stator, and pull back the stator just enough to access the starter motor. Then remove the two bolts holding on the starter motor with an 8mm socket and remove the starter motor. Step 13. Remove the ground wire from the starter with an 8mm socket. Then pull back the boot and remove the black battery lead with a 10mm socket. Lastly, use a 7mm socket to disconnect the starter relay and fully remove your old starter motor. Step 14. Take your new starter, reattach the starter relay, reconnect the black battery lead, 
and replace the ground wire and bolt. Now follow these steps to reassemble your unit. Set the starter back in place and replace and tighten the two bolts with an 8mm socket. Lift the stator back in place and replace and tighten the three bolts. Replace the rotor and nut and fully tighten with a 19mm socket. Replace the trigger and tighten the two bolts. Then replace the engine shroud. Slide the fan into place and make sure the holes align on the rotor and then replace the pulley and secure the four bolts. Set the engine shroud in place and make sure it's fully seated with no wires being pinched and replace the four bolts around the shroud, including any wire clips. Replace the recoil housing with the recoil handle on the right side and tighten the three bolts. Make sure to include all washers, set the control unit back in place and secure with the bolts. Then replace the ground wire on the front of the control unit. Slide the carburetor insulator, gasket, and carburetor back onto the studs. Then replace the front panel and feed the wires back across the unit. Reconnect all wire connectors from the panel and carburetor, including the ground wire. Make sure you are making all the correct connections, and consult your photo from earlier if needed. Feed the three wire connectors through the hole in the front panel, and reconnect the wire connectors behind the power panel. Replace the power panel and secure with the Phillips screws. Then set the front panel fully back in place and tighten the bolts around the sides. Then replace the fuel knob and secure with the screw and replace the yellow cap. Reconnect the propane fuel line to the backside of the carburetor and tighten the hose clamp. Then replace the gasoline fuel line and reconnect the other end of the fuel line to the silver port on the fuel valve. Replace the choke wire, align it with the mark that you made, and tighten both screws to secure it in place. Once the panel, wires, and fuel lines are all in place, fasten the wire clips around the unit to hold everything in place. Replace the inlet pipe, followed by the air cleaner, and slide the air cleaner onto the studs. Reconnect the breather tube to the valve cover, and replace and tighten the two air cleaner nuts. Then tighten the hose clamps around the inlet pipe. Set the fuel tank back in place, and replace the four bolts and washers. Replace the fuel vent line and reconnect the fuel line to the gold port on the back of the fuel valve. Remove the fuel cap to set the top panel back in place and make sure it's fully seated all around the edge. Then replace the four bolts on the sides of the panel and all eight bolts around the top of the panel, followed by the rubber caps, and reconnect and replace the fuel cap. Fit the recoil handle through the hole in the side panel and replace the two Phillips screws. Then set the side panel into place and replace the two bolts on the top of the panel. Lastly, reconnect the battery, replace the spark plug cap, and replace the remaining side panel. Your starter replacement is complete. Always follow the safety, operation, and maintenance instructions in your operator's manual. And for more help guides, visit the Champion Help Center at help.championpowerequipment.com.